Welcome to Thermal Regulation 1. We're going to start talking about how our focus animals, dogs, cats, and horses, maintain their body temperature. And of course, what we talk about with those focus animals still applies to almost all the mammals and even birds in this case, but I just, you know, I always try to focus on dogs, cats, and horses. So, Thermal Regulation 1. I'm starting out with an introduction. And I think we've used this term before, but homeostasis is where the body tries to maintain a constant state, internal state at least, even in the face of bad things happening in the environment. And so in this case, we really want to talk about an animal that's a homeotherm. And a homeotherm can also be called an endotherm. That's in parentheses there. And also listing, the second point there is sometimes they're called warm-blooded. But basically, we control, in even humans of course, control unconsciously, mostly, our core body temperature. And there's always some kind of a balance and as you can see here, if the core body temperature raises, I'm right over here now, then you tend to export more heat. And there's different ways be, of heat transfer mechanisms. We're going to be talking about that, definitely. But a homeotherm, endotherm, warm-blooded, basically we're having a stable internal environment, in this case a stable body temperature, internal temperature, in the face of quite different outside temperatures, right? Winter, summer, you name it. Of course, when you're learning some topic for the first time, uh, terms are important. I've always said that throughout all these lessons. Uh, make sure you pay attention to definitions of terms. You can always look them up as well. I've got written up here on the top, ambient temperature. Ambient uh, is the area surrounding the animal. So the ambient temperature, like right now I'm inside. So I've got a thermometer near me. It says it's 70 degrees. And that's the ambient temperature. Now if I was outside and it's 98 degrees outside, then the ambient temperature would be 98. Okay, so it's whatever surrounding surrounding the animal at the time. It's not always like the outside temperature, right? If you have an inside dog, then its ambient temperature is whatever the temperature of the room is, basically. Okay, well, we did use endotherm, the term, recently, just seconds ago. And I wanted to show you this little uh, figure here. Uh, an example of an endotherm is a bobcat. It's a warm-blooded cat versus an ectotherm, a snake. Endo means within, right? That's a prefix meaning within. So they basically generate their temperature from within, whereas a snake tends to be an ectotherm. It needs some warmth from its environment to get its body temperature up. And if they're warm, they can move around. If they're not warm, they're pretty cold. They're not going to be moving very fast. So this is a nice illustration. Look at the x-axis here. Ambient temperature happens to be in degrees C. And then body temperature. And the other thing you should notice is then, look at the snake is very dependent upon what the ambient temperature is. If it's very cold, the snake is very cold. And the bobcat tends to be independent of ambient temperature, although you can see here on the lower end of the scale, the body temperature does drop a little bit. And I'll just leave that right up there. And then I wanted to bring the concept of how body temperature can fluctuate over a day's period. And so here is time of day on the x-axis in hours. I, I didn't read this study totally, but I think maybe 24 might be midnight. And so 6 is 6 a.m. and that is noon and so forth. 
Well, this is for humans. And what's kind of neat is it's got on the y-axis, the body temperature in C, and the normal is usually 37, although it's not, I could figure out which line is 37, but it's not worth it. And this was an experiment with room temperature. And basically, the cooler the room temperature, your body tends to be a little lower if the room is lower, although this would all still be in the normal range. But it looks like body temperature during the night falls. And I guess probably muscles aren't moving and whatnot. And so when a pattern tends to exhibit um, a repetition every day, that's called diurnal. And let me get that on the screen here for you. So I'm going to... So what I just made appear on the screen was the, the two words diurnal pattern. So basically, this graph of body temperature over time is showing a diurnal pattern. Now let's talk a little bit about internal body temperature for our focus animals. I have a table here that actually shows the rectal temperatures of different animals, and I'll point out the dog, cat, and horse. And this illustration is good because it gives us degrees Fahrenheit and degrees C, which is a nice thing to do. And the rectal thermometer, you know, is often used to get body temperatures of our animals, of our pets, and hence the rectal temperatures are considered to be the core body temperatures. So let me go. Here's cat. And I'm just going to look at the degrees Fahrenheit because here in the United States, at least we use Fahrenheit. We're one of the only countries in the world that does that. And then sometimes degrees C doesn't make a lot of sense to us unless we use it a lot. Anyway, the cat, 101.5. Sometimes you'll see 101.5 for the dog. Here they've got two. And then the horse. Look at, it's got a little difference between the mare and the stallion, but you know, there's not a whole lot of difference there. But you can see the other temperatures for the other animals. But basically, all those animals are warmer than a human, right? 98.6 would be the human average temperature, and all those are above, and most of them are going to hover around 101. Okay, well, I want to make sure you understand one of the important concepts here for thermal regulation, and that is the body temperature that you see in an animal is always a balance between what heat is being produced by the animal, or maybe it's laying on a hot surface. So basically, you could say heat gain versus heat loss. I guess I'd like to see that production there changed into heat gained because you can gain heat from your environment as well as metabolism. And we'll be talking about this later. And then heat loss. And it's always a balance. And then, of course, homeotherms are going to try to maintain that balance. And then I like this figure. We're going to see this again. But I like it because it shows how complicated heat inputs and outputs are another way of saying that. And I'll say some, I'm going to talk about all these. These are called heat transfer mechanisms where the arrows are going, uh, not the contracting muscle, of course, that's uh, internally there. But the arrows show we can gain heat from the sun, we can lose it to the environment. Of course, horses here are great. They have great sweat glands, and they're one of the few animals that sweat. You know, most animals do not sweat. People, of course, sweat. Horses sweat. Dogs and cats basically don't. They might have a few. I know dogs have a few sweat glands on their pads of their feet. Um, another important thing, and of course for dogs, the panting, respiratory heat loss. But we'll be talking about this. And in, in spite of all what's going on here in this figure, we're trying to maintain a core body temperature. And in subsequent lessons, we'll talk about the heat transfer mechanisms, like I said, and then what the animal can do internally to help or hinder heat flow, and then what 
we'll end up talking about what pet owners can do for their animals to make sure they are in an environment that makes them the most comfortable. And we'll call that the thermal neutral zone, which we'll be talking about. And while I was looking for images, I ran across this image of a Siamese cat. There are two of them there. And I wanted to, it just has a little sidebar here, talk about how the Siamese cat, the coat color, is a little bit of an indication of what environment, what thermal environment they had when they were younger. So you can see this cat on the right has darker hair on its points, it's called, and versus this animal here that has not nearly as much dark on that face, especially, and we can't see the tails very well, but I think you can be convinced that this cat has a lot less dark hair than the cat on the right, and that's a reflection of the ambient temperature it was raised in. I mean, this is really funky, but the cat on the right was raised in a cooler environment than the cat on the left. And the mechanism there is there's this weird enzyme called tyrosinase. Whenever you see ace at the suffix, that means an enzyme. It takes tyrosine and changes it to a pigment, melanin. But what's kind of funky is that this enzyme doesn't work in warmer climates like the normal body temperature. So where the body tends to be warmer, you don't get this enzyme working. But where it gets cooler, the pads of the feet, the end of the nose, the points, in other words, then this enzyme works at lower than body temperature. And that is really kind of interesting. Talk about how ambient temperature can affect how a cat looks, at least its uh, coat color. Okay, I'd like to talk a little bit about determining what the temperature is of either an animal or a surface. So here's a thermometer. This happens to be from the human supply. And you can see that 98.6 here is marked, 37. And there it is right there, 98.6. And so I'm not sure if that's a rectal thermometer or oral thermometer, it doesn't matter. The point is you can read it directly. Okay, so that's one way to take temperature of an animal or a person. Then you've probably all been to the physician physician's office, sorry, and had one of these things, I guess I'll say, stuck in your ear. And really, it's an infrared thermometer. And what? And I've got a couple other images here. But there's the eardrum there, and it actually looks at the eardrum, although, you know, there's no light. You don't have to have light because this is in the infrared zone. And uh, this detector looks at the color in the infrared uh, spectrum, I guess I should say. And so that eardrum, of course, you should know is called the tympanic membrane. I'll put that over here, maybe. The tympanic membrane is indicating, you know, a pretty good indicator of the temperature of the ear. And then you can buy these things, or you could buy that ear thermometer too. But here's one, and I just want to point out something because I've got a little quiz coming up here for you. This is the front, and there's really like a little laser beam that when you pull the trigger here, it shoots out a laser, like a laser pointer. So it kind of shows you what spot the infrared is detecting. This is the front, so you aim it at something. The laser pointer helps you decide what you're going to take the temperature of. And then this is the back, and it's a readout, and oftentimes they record high, low, and a range, okay? And it just, it, the only readout is the temperature, okay? That one looks like it's got a decimal there, 36.8. Or you could measure something that's 368 degrees, like a stove or something, right? So I don't know the history of that picture there. But you can buy uh, these infrared thermometers that actually takes a picture of the house or whatever you're looking at. Could be a radiator in a car. And the color is an indication of how much heat is being lost. The blue would tend, look at here, the evergreens, they're not gonna have any heat, so they're blue. The darker the color there, less less heat, yellow is hot, and I believe up here, the red is, there's usually a scale on these pictures, there's not on this one, but there's a lot of heat being lost through the roof. So if you own that house, you'd go, we need to 
insulate the attic or re-insulate it, okay? Now I found this great illustration of how those infrared thermometers work. Now some of them, like I showed you the house, you, you can take a picture of the whole thing. You can even actually print it off. And I found this one, this owner must have one of those. Those things are costing the thousands. So maybe the owner of this dog has one, maybe he does something professional or has one anyway, but they're in the thousands when you can see a whole image like that rather than just have a readout. But this guy comes home and the dog is on the floor and, you know, he's trained this dog not to jump on the couch and the dog looks pretty innocent, right? I don't know what gave him the idea to do this, but look what he found out when he used his infrared camera. And I love this quote, busted. No, really, I never go on the couch. And you can see that he'd been laying right here up on the couch, but must have heard the owner come home and jump down, but there's still heat in the cushion, right? Because it wouldn't cool off. So I love that picture. Okay, now we're going to take a little quiz and then we're going to be done. That finishes lesson one here of thermal regulation. So I've got one of these infrared thermometers and there you can, I'm enlarging that so you can see how you got it. I think this one cost about $100. Okay, infrared thermometer. You point it at something and you get a readout and I've got it in Fahrenheit. So here it is. And there's this one doesn't read out any decimal. So it's 53 degrees Fahrenheit on the ground here. This is on a spring day. I think it was, well, it was obviously very sunny, but the ground was 53 degrees. And off to the left here is Onyx, the 180 pound Newfoundland laying on the ground. So obviously you should know that we're going to be talking about this later, but heat is flowing out of his body into the ground because heat always flows from high to low. We'll be talking about that. But now my question is, and let me get that smaller here. I've got this thermometer now reading the ground. It's 53 degrees. He's been laying there about 15 minutes. I am going to aim the thermometer up here in the top of his neck up here. You can see I've got another picture that shows it, but I, wanna, I don't want to show you the other picture yet. Okay, so what's the temperature up here? on his body. 53 on the ground. We said dog's internal is 101.5 about. It's sunny. And what is this temperature right here? I'm going to silently count to five and then change the picture and give you the answer. So think about it, five seconds. Okay, so there it is, 53 on the ground. What's onyx temperature? Yes, that's right. 169 degrees on the top of his head, right up here. We'll be explaining how that's possible. But it makes a great point that these infrared thermometers only do surface. It's like you looking at somebody's shirt and say, oh, you've got a yellow shirt or somebody has a red shirt or somebody has a blue shirt. It's only what's happening at the surface. Obviously, he can't be 168 degrees. He would die. And in fact, he looks comfortable. He's sleeping. But think about all the heat flow that's going on. And we'll talk about things that, you know, are good insulation, good conductors, not good conductors and all that. But, uh, Everybody I've ever shown this to never guessed it right. Okay. And here's the list of those fine illustrations I put down. The one on Onyx, the two pictures of Onyx aren't listed here because they're my own. I could give them to people though, that's for sure. See you later.